Five school. We thank God for the privilege to be called upon to meet with him, to dine with him, to hear his heart, and to be impacted. We pray that it won't, it won't just be one of those gatherings, but it will be one that meets each of us in a deep and personal way in the name of Jesus. So tonight we are going back to the series Understanding Love. And if you remember before the last two sessions where Pastor Line shared with us then the story, the issues of on people's hearts, we have been dealing with various aspects of understanding love. Today again, Father would have us understand that love is the key. Bible says, for God so loved that he sent his only begotten son. We know that, but we do not really understand that. And so today he's saying that love is the key. And when we read 1 Corinthians 13, 13, you know, the whole um, verses, that whole book talks about love, love, love. But the end part is, now there remains faith, hope, and love. And love is the greatest. And so I pray in the name of Jesus that as the Lord teaches us himself, we will catch it. We will see light. In this light, we will be lighted so that lives will be saved. Our dear Pastor Adeline is the one who's going to be leading us in this teaching tonight. I entreat us all to take our Bibles, look into it ourselves, and please, in any which way, as the Lord impresses upon you, as you hear something that you need clarity on, do feel free. If you are led, do not do not keep quiet, unmute, send the DM, share in the chat box, and let us all be blessed, even as the Lord has blessed you. Thank you so much once again for joining and um, without much ado, I'd like to call upon Pastor Adeline to take over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, my dear sister Jewel. Thank you, dear sister Nano Usua, and thank you, all my lovely sisters. Good evening. We thank God so much for tonight, and we trust that as he has brought us together with one accord, he's going to have his way with us, just minister to our hearts. and. As we sit at his feet this evening, we know, we are confident that we will not leave the same way that we came. We trust that he will teach us about love. He will teach us about God, for God is love. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We adore you. We thank you. We thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you that you are God and you are good. I thank you for the gathering of your dear daughters. I thank you for how deeply you love us. And I thank you that no one comes into your presence and goes back the same. I commit this evening session into your hands, Father. I ask you to speak. Lord, where there is darkness, let there be light in the name of Jesus. Father, minister to us your truth in any area where we have been struggling to walk in love, tonight set us free, deliver us, help us. Holy Spirit, help us to be like Jesus. But the word of God says that for in this world, we are like Jesus. We wanna be conformed to the image of your son, Jesus Christ. We avail ourselves and we, we ask you to, to do this in us and take the glory in Jesus name, amen. All right, sweet sisters, we thank God so much once again for this evening. So this evening we want to talk about love. There are so dimensions, there are so many dimensions to this because you know, at, at the end of the day, God is love, God is love. And if we don't love, then we don't know him. And when we talk about our marriages, we all got into marriage believing that we were in love. 
We said it many times. We said that we loved each other and we were confident. But when we got into the marriage, we found out that there is actually a love that we, we hadn't really known that what we were describing as love was that which appealed to our flesh, that which appealed to our, our, our natural man, to our senses, to our feelings. We, we walked in what is called conditional love. You know, we walked in romantic love, erotic love. You know, we, we walked in the kind of love that was a give and take. You, you give me and I give you, et cetera. We walked in the kind of love that expected a response. We, we walked in our own definitions of love. You know, we were even confident to say that, you know, it's because I love you so much. That's why I get so angry, so jealous, you know, so miserable. We, we used to believe all these kinds of things. But, you know, as we started to mature, as the Holy Spirit started to teach us, he made us aware that it's really about his word and what he teaches us in his word. And I remember the time when the Lord showed me the scripture that greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And I was shocked because I, I couldn't see you know, it, it didn't really make sense to me how that is love because some time ago, I have to be in the equation. You know, if I said that I loved you, I needed to be in there to feel you, to be with you, to hold you, to talk to you, to listen to you. You know, I had to be in there. But in this case, the greatest love of all was one in which, you know, the other died. He died, he, he actually died. And as I observed that love, which really was the love that was exhibited to us at the cross of Calvary, I started to realize how much I had never known love and I had never walked in it. I remember the day the Lord gave me this revelation. I actually wept, I really wept because I had never seen it. I had been weeping with a desperate desire to be loved to be loved, to be wanted, to be needed, you know. But that day, when the Lord opened up my eyes to see how Jesus loves me and what he did on the cross of Calvary, I started to weep because for once I saw how undeserving I was and how he loved me anyway and how I hadn't even bothered to respond to such, you know, such amazing love. I hadn't even bothered. And here I was making demands that others love me in a certain way. And so little by little, the Lord began to teach me. He taught me from 1 Corinthians 13. We can look at that. He also taught me from um, the book of 1 John. I believe it should be five chapters, 1 John. Um, so for that book, it was... A very long time ago, I, I got a book that said, that was titled, How to Read Your Bible. And in that book, I was told to read the book of 1 John and to read it like seven times. So I started to read it. And as I started to read it, I realized that I didn't love at all. I was shocked at what I found because I, I really I really thought I, I, I was walking in love, but, but I realized I didn't. I actually realized that there were times I walked in hatred, hatred. There were times I got angry, you know, because I mean, I, I really had an attitude. I'll give you examples. So there were times when I would feel angry if somebody called my spouse too much or was always on the phone with him or would make requests. Oh, won't you come over? Oh, please come and help me do this at home. And I'm thinking, what and who should help me? You know, and I'll have an attitude and I'll be swollen with jealousy and anger and all of that. And I used to feel very justified about it. And I felt because I love you, I expect you to stay here. You know, forget the other person, be with me. But over time I've learned that I, I really missed it. 
love is, is not like that at all. If we really want to walk in agape love, we have to deny ourselves. It's, it's a place of self-sacrifice. We've got to lay ourselves on the altar. And until we catch it, that that is the key, really there's no breakthrough. Until we come to that point where we walk the path of the cross, where we walk, you know, just the trajectory that Jesus walked, you, you realize that we, we don't blossom, we don't, we don't flourish, we, we don't thrive, we don't do well. And so we want to humble ourselves and ask the Lord to help us. Now, some time ago, we judge matters at face value. We just say, you know, pastor, do you think this is fair? You know, so-and-so is always on his phone. So-and-so is always talking to so-and-so. And, and I'm, I'm just left over there to, you know, to, to do all the work, to do this. Do I, I don't like that. I don't feel that. I don't feel good. And all those things. It all boils down to nagging, boils down to complaining, you know, boils down to, to, to an exposure of the state of our hearts. You know, sometimes the more you talk, the more you expose your heart and, and the more the content does not look like Jesus, you know, and if we will be humble and true, we will find out that, wow, whenever you come to that realization, you, you want to say, Father, forgive me, help me and help me to love. There came a time I saw that the problem, the answer to every problem was that we needed to grow in love, that we were walking in a lack of love. So sweet says, how, how are you doing in, in your work, in, in your relationships, in your marriage, you know, in your work with your parents, in your work with your siblings, you know, in your work with your work colleagues, you know, in, in, in your work with your friends and family, you know, with people around you? How are you doing? How are you doing in your relationship with your house help, with, with your driver, you know, with, with, with the people around you? How, how are you doing? How are you doing in your work with your mother-in-law? How are you doing with your father-in-law? How are you doing with your children? You know, how, how are you doing? Are you doing well? Are you seeing yourself growing in love? Or are you finding that finding out that you're becoming increasingly irritable, you know, getting increasingly upset, you know, getting more and more miserable. If so, then you're winning in love. And we need to take a pause and ask the Lord to search us, reveal us to ourselves and to help us. First John 4, 7 to 12 says, dear, dear friends, so sisters, this goes to us. Dear friends, let us love one another. You see, so he's, he's giving us an instruction. Let us love one another. For love comes from God. Wow. It doesn't come from anywhere else. It comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. Wow. And knows God. You know, there are times when we gather to pray, say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. And it's amazing. He's just saying, you know what? Walk in my love. And that's proof that you know me. The word of God continues by saying, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. In fact, this is a deal breaker. This is a deal breaker. He said that whoever does not love you see, whoever does not love, does not know God. Wow. So many, so many of us profess to know God. But we are kind of shaky in the work of love. If we feel offended about a matter, we begin to criticize and castigate. We begin to speak and sometimes we speak and we spew venom. He said, whoever does not love, does not know God because God is love. You remember the case of George Floyd? You know, it, it, it triggered, you know, emotions of anger and all that. And before we knew it, many were those that were preaching a false message. Very angry. Shifting away from the God kind of life. You know, sometimes you can go through a very tough time and still the Lord calls you to love. I remember the time we experienced robbers at home and, and, and the Lord said to me, pray for their salvation. And, and when I told the boys, I said, this is what father wants us to do. And he said, what? We thought you were going to say that, you know, you know, like to, for them to be caught by the police for them. And I said, well, that's the message that God father wants us to pray for their salvation. And we started to do that. And, you know, sometimes you would wonder, you know, the ways of God, they, they are different. 
they are different. Because some time ago, you would expect that you want to flow in anger, in judge, a critical and judgmental spirit, and you think it will satisfy you. No, it actually destroys you. Do you see? So I just need us to understand what is happening. That from today, you want to desire to walk in love. And opportunities upon opportunities will be presented to you. Many are those that will come knocking on your car door when you are driving and say, could I have some money? And sometimes it irritates you. Sometimes you wonder, where did this person come from, etc. But the Lord requires a certain response from you. And may you allow the spirit to lead you. There are those who you've probably helped in time past and they did nothing, they despised your help or whatever, and they show up again at your door. Are you going to love them? Are you going to be there for them? Are you going to, you know, help them out? Or are you going to just turn, turn a blind eye? There, there, were, there are times when I feel like, oh, I'm exhausted. I'm fed up with this matter. I'm fed up. And, and then I check the scriptures and I realize that the Lord doesn't call me to, to quit or to be fed up. Do you see? So he wants us to get a key that in this life, you and I, we ought to be like Jesus. We ought to walk in love. And the love that he wants us to walk in is very much similar to what he got himself. He loved us so much that he gave his one and only son for his son to come and die so that we will be born into eternal life. He said, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Mind you, the blood that was shed was the same blood that heals us. It is the same blood that saves us. It is the same blood that atones for us. It's the same blood that redeems us, purchased us back. You know, when we sin and we're cut off from God, it's the same blood that brings us back into the kingdom of God. He had to die to make that possible. Sometimes you ask yourself, what is it that you have crucified your flesh for? What is it that you have decided, I'm going to pull myself out of this equation. I will lay down my life for this matter. What are you doing that is sacrificial? What are you doing that, that is modeling after Jesus? We've got, to put, we've got to put ourselves down on the altar and let God be God. He says that, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And that's why he says in the scriptures that, oh, no man, nothing but love. We have to love one another. Sis, how are you doing at home with your husband? Oh, well, he doesn't talk to me, so I also, I don't mind him. Sweetie, that's not love, sweetheart. That is not love. Maybe he doesn't talk to you, but for you, in the posture of your heart, are you reverencing God? Are you recognizing that, look, whatever is happening here, whatever is causing this tension is not of the kingdom of God. I'm not going to align to the kingdom of darkness. By the grace of God, I will walk differently. Did you see where we are going with this? And when you decide to align yourself to the Lord, things begin to work because it's a key in the kingdom. When you begin to walk with Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When you begin to walk where you yourself begin to express, you, you realize that, no, this is not my spouse doing this. This is some other entity that is operating. I'm just trusting God. I'm going to honor. I'm going to love. I'm going to serve. I'm going to do it. Do you know what is going to happen? Recently, I was telling my husband, went to a certain situation, you know, we're experiencing a certain situation. And I told him, I said, you know what? I mean, it just, it's, it's just so beautiful when we, we know for, for a fact that love heals. And he nodded. He was like, mm, yeah. And I said, yeah, love heals. And I said, so sweet, I know what we are going to do. We're just going to continue to walk in love. So there's, there's a situation we're dealing with. And both of us concluded that we must continue to love. Now, there were times when the person was not being loving. <laughs> person was being accusatory in nature, person was being very hostile in nature, but we said, you know what, love heals, we will love you anyway, and we just continued. We just became so liberated and so free as we continued in the walk of love, but some time ago, I'll be tense, I'll be angry, because I want the person to stop, you got to stop this, you, gotta, you can't control what somebody else is doing or not doing, but you can decide to come in alignment, and before you know it, 
the Lord himself will cause all around you also to begin to align. Okay. So I want us to be encouraged that the Lord is calling us to walk in the perfection of his love. Now, there are times when some of us have walked in fear. There are times when you have been afraid that, oh gosh, if, I, if, I, if I'm not watchful, maybe somebody will have an affair. If I don't do this, this will go wrong. Oh gosh, you know, there's, there, there's been some kind of jumpy situations. There are certain situations in the marriage now is coming from a spirit of fear where there is, you know, I, I fear he won't do this. I fear he will do that. I fear. And, and sometimes you're not even aware that the whole thing that is happening is actually a masquerade of the spirit of fear. Sometimes you're not aware. Do you know that je jealousy comes from fear? Do you know that you are angry because you are afraid? Do, do you know that all of those frustrations, if you go deeper, the root is fear. Manipulation is from fear. Suspicion and doubt is from fear. It, all of that is coming out of fear. But the Bible says that perfect love is that which drives out fear. Love is the key that sends that fear away. Perfect love, walking in God's perfect love, being so rooted and grounded in him that you do not have any anxieties, you don't have any palpitations, you are not scared, you are just rooted in the Lord and you know that my God is with me, my God will take care of me. Do you see it? Perfect love, it drives out fear. The word of God says that, um, so from I think 1 John 4, 16 down, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Isn't it awesome to live in God? Just because you are walking in love, you are living in him. Isn't that awesome? And God is living in you. This is amazing. Because sometimes you say, God, come and have your way in me. Oh, God, come and help me. Oh, God, come and heal me. He said, walk in love. Once you walk in love, it is so. He's living in you and you are living in him. That's powerful. No wonder is the greatest commandment to love God with every part of us and also to love people just as we love ourselves. Sis, do you love God so passionately, so deeply? You love him so much. He says that if you love him, you obey my commands. Do you? What about your neighbor? Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Sometimes I just keep hearing, you know, some say that, oh, don't love your neighbor more than yourself. Ask yourself, don't worry, don't worry. Let's not go into too much English language. But do you love your neighbor? It's a very simple question. Do you love your neighbor? Do you love that friend in your husband's office that makes tea for him every day? Do you love her or she irritates you? Do, do you love, you know, that sister? Oh, hello, hi, hello. And you're like, oh, she's too much, she's too much. Do you love her as a sister? Do you know that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, that your spouse is your brother in the Lord and has God as father? How are you doing in your relationships? The Bible says that, he says, this is how love is made complete amongst us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. On the day of judgment, only that which is of God can stand before God and make it. On the day of judgment, Faith, hope, and love must present. We must be presented before God, full of faith, full of hope, and full of love. Are we going to be able to stand before him, shining and glowing in love, agape love, the kind of love that is patient and kind? It doesn't envy, it doesn't boast. The kind of love that doesn't keep record of wrongs, which we all used to do. That kind of love, is that what we are walking in? The Bible says there is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Why are you afraid? I don't know. I don't know. If somebody, somebody, somebody say, if I'm not there, who will take care of the, if I don't do the, who will do that? If I'm not here, what, no, the, all the ifs, all of those fearful statements. It's not necessary. God is with you and God is your father. He's got you. You are sorted. Rest in him and continue to walk in his love. Do you see it? So all of these things I'm saying it to encourage you. He makes it very clear that if we don't love our brother or sister, then we do not know God. He says anybody who loves God 
It means you also love your brother or your sister. It is critical. When was the last time you checked on such and such a friend? When was the last time you checked on so and so with whom you are in a covenant relationship with? When was the last time he had a meal? Do you know? How is he doing? How is he doing in his health? How is he doing in his faith? When was the last time you said a prayer for him? When was the last time you gave him a hug? How is he doing in his emotions? I don't know. I don't really care. I don't even think he's emotional, sweetie. It's your assignment. It's your assignment. You don't care. It's your assignment, sweetheart. You got to care. The Bible says that we should not be like Cain who murdered his brother. Anytime we walk in that level of hatred, irritation, whatever, we are walking the Cain life. He didn't call us to walk the Cain life. He called us to walk in love. He said we must love one another. It is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. He says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. We are not to walk in complaints. We are not to walk in arguments. We are not to walk in, in what justifying ourselves. You know, no, we are not walking in any of that. We are to walk in love. Sisters, you know, I mean, it, it came to a time in my life where this is quite recent. I started feeling a conviction that I don't have to ask people, how are you? In fact, for some time, I did not like to do that. So especially when somebody's going through a very difficult time in her marriage, maybe they come to me for counseling and all that, and I'm supposed to check on them. I will not say, how are you? Because I know that they are going through a tough time. And I remember that when I was going through a tough time, if you made the mistake, if my husband especially, made the mistake of asking me one morning when I wake up, how are you doing? Oh, it won't be pleasant. Because I will lash out. I'm not happy. I'm so, this wasn't what I bargained for. What is all this? I'm just so disappointed. So do you know how much you hurt me when you did that? Do you know how much? And then on and on and on. And at that time, I was so foolish. I did not know that any time that I brought out the utterance, whether I spoke it, whether I taught it, or whether I typed it, Sweetheart, you prophesied it. So I didn't know even how to love myself. You got to learn how to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, if you don't know how to love even yourself, you will be prophesying over yourself every single time you speak forth the matter. It's a prophecy. It will manifest. It's a seed. You have planted it. It will harvest it follows the laws of the kingdom. I did not know. And so I would just bring it all out, you know, like a rainstorm. And I, and I did not know. I walked in foolishness. But now I know. And now I love you too much to ask you that question. And so rather what I say is, hi, sis. I trust that by the grace of God, you're doing good. Or I say, grace and peace be unto you and your lovely family. Oh, I say blessings. I say blessings be upon you and your household. I'm searching the scriptures and I don't see Apostle Paul say, how are you? I see him say, I do not cease to give thanks for you. I see him say grace and peace be upon you. I see him bless the person he's about to speak to. But when we go around do this, how are you? How are you? Sometimes you haven't even taken a pause to search. But when the question comes, then you begin to bring out, you bring out all sort of feelings and things. And before you know it, you are, you are prophesying. I love you too much. I love you too much to take you through that. Do you see? And so I, I, as, I, as I started to ponder these kinds of things, I said, Father, help us to love each other well. If we don't understand the keys to the kingdom, <clears throat> we will be our own undoing. So if I, if I call you and I say, hey, how are you? And then you, you start to bring it all out. What happens in the realms is that 
in their realms, the accuser of the brethren says, Father, she said it. She said it. She says she's not happy, so she cannot, she cannot enjoy happiness or joy or whatever. She said it. She just decreed it. She says she's miserable. She says she's exhausted. Therefore, exhaustion is her portion. She says she's sick. She said this, this, this. And then Pastor so-and-so was a witness to all that she said. So in the testimony of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. And that, that's the word of God. That is the word. So it's true. It's, it's factually correct. So it is so. So most of the time, I like to speak for it is well. It is well upon you and your household. I said, please be encouraged. Don't despair for the Lord is with you. The Lord is your strength. And, and I think sometimes maybe you'll be feeling, oh, what's all this? Sweetie, that's the walk. That is the walk. It will not be a walk of love if we sit down and pity party with each other because fast forward a year from now, two years from now, we will still be sitting at that place. And that's why the Bible does not encourage us to go by that method. Do you see it? So I just want to encourage us. The Lord wants us to love God with every part of us, including our strength. So if there's an exhaustion, even that, bring it upon that altar before him. He knows how to strengthen us. Then he wants us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Sometimes take a pause and say that everything that I describe about so-and-so to so-and-so, what if it was the person talking about me that way? Will, I, will, will it be okay? If it's not okay, don't do it. Jesus said that don't do unto others what you want them to do unto you. So, so the work of love is sad. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. Do you cover or do you expose? And, and sometimes when you allow the scripture to read you or minister to you or preach to you or help you, you see that you are made, you are being washed, you are being helped. But if you don't allow it, there's no amount of human convincing that will do anything. I've come to realize that. So I don't like to spend too much time on that. The word is able to do, the Bible says it is quick and powerful. The word is able to work. So back to First John 5 chapters. The book I was reading said I should read it seven times. That time I didn't know where to start from the Bible. I was just feeling so miserable, so walking up and down and I not knowing what to do. And I found the book. It said, read first John 5. So I started reading. That's when I got a revelation that all the people I was irritated with. Why? Because, you know, on the phone, they could laugh and have a joke and stuff with my spouse. And I couldn't. I, I, was, I was often angry and walking around the house with an attitude and others could have a smile and joke. And I didn't realize that if you are somebody who wants to be friendly or wants to have friends, then you have to be friendly yourself. And the book started to teach me. First John, one, two, three, four, five. Five very short chapters started to show me that outline. If you are not walking in love, you are stumbling around in darkness. You don't know where you are going. You don't have God, but you are not aware. What? I don't have God. Yes. If you don't love, you do not have God. What? I was surprised. What? I don't have God if I don't love. Yes, please. That's the word. It will never expire. That's what it is. So... Then suddenly, the flashlight went off from all them that those I was accusing or whatever, and it started to shine upon me. And I was not looking like Jesus. I was looking like an ambassador for Lucifer to do accusations. Go, go and keep accusing, keep, keep saying things, blaming, share it, tell, keep talking. And I saw I'm not walking in love. So I had to come back. And say, Father, I'm back at the cross. Help me. America, come. So I want to encourage us. I want to encourage all of us that the word of God is true. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is quick. It's active. It's, it's the deal. It's the key. If you get a revelation, your eyes will open. You will see it clearly. And then as you begin to go deeper in the word, you will see that he has, he has calmed the raging storm. He has stilled you. You become still. You see, I will be still and know you are God. Suddenly you become still. See the raging storm, the bubbling waters, that chaotic face that, you know, used to, used to, some way, somehow we couldn't think straight. 
it just suddenly becomes calm. Suddenly, you begin to have peace. You begin to have joy. Sometimes you realize that the actual situation hasn't really changed. But now, you are joyful. You are peaceful. You may not necessarily be happy, but at least you are joyful. Considering the fact that being joyful is of a higher value than happiness would ever be. We have to understand the values so that you know which one you should manifest. Joyful is of greater value than happiness, which is very temporal. You see? So I just want to encourage us. Love is the key. At a point, I realized that walking in tension in my house compared to walking in unity eh, and peace and walking in agape love, which is a self-sacrificing love. I realized now the value. I will always choose agape love. Choose to humble myself, choose to quieten myself, choose to uh, understand the other rather than seeking to be understood. You know, choose to, you know, you, you, you choose to be God-centered and then you care for others. You take yourself out of the equation. But guess what? The Lord has a way of bringing us back into the equation to receive. There was a time in my life when the Lord taught me. I started learning so much. You know, he said, Adeline, love gives, 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 and forgives and keeps giving. I, I started to understand. But then there came a time when it was time to receive, but I had been, I had died to that concept of receiving anything. I had just died. I was now operating in, I was like, Lord, crucify my flesh. Help me to, so I was operating in that level. So I think that the whole receiving level, I had I hadn't, my eyes hadn't opened to it. So one day my husband started to teach me and he showed me that if you are unable to receive, it could be an indication of pride. Wow. I, I said, really? Yeah. He said, that if you are not able to receive, you can't receive love, you can't receive instruction, you, you difficult to accept a gift, you can't receive, then it can be an indication of pride. So that too, I said, Lord, forgive me. Because love is a key. The giving is there. But when you are given, which is seed form, there is a harvest of receiving. Do you see? So that's too, I ask the Lord to help me. And he helped me. He will help you. So there comes a time when you're a lover and another time you're a beloved and another time you are both lover and beloved, a giving and a receiving. And it, 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 the Lord is able to bring you to that 100% arena. So yes, there's a time when it's a sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, but after that, there is a resurrection also and an ascension. So you get it all. But it's not the getting that is the focus or the motive right now. It's simply an understanding and an alignment to the scripture. An acknowledgement that whatever method that I'm looking at that I've been using in the past, that's not what it is. The Lord is calling us to a simple walk of love. He said, if you do this, he said, against this, there is no law. If you walk in love, there is, there is not. If you walk in love, you cannot become a thief. If you walk in love, there is no way anybody will be walk in love and become an armed robber or a rapist or a liar or an adulterer or an adulteress. Or it's not possible. When we walk in love, there, there is no law. There is no law. You can't deceive people. You don't, don't, you don't, don't preach for uh, uh, false motives. You don't do things for, well, you're not a hypocrite. When you walk in love, there is, there is, there is, that's it. But when the motive is not love, you can preach for all we care. But if you're not preaching out of love, it's useless. If you don't pray out of love, it's useless. If you don't fast out of love, it's useless. If the motive is not love, then it's not, it's not okay. Do you see? So, so that was, those were some of the things that, you know, the Lord was showing me, making it very clear to me that this is it. And, and it's the only way. There's no other way. This is the way. And we have to walk it. And he will teach us. It will not be forced on anybody. Nobody has to force anything. The Lord will teach us. Not too long ago, you know, we had a certain situation. It was a difficult situation. 
difficult. You have to, you know, you, you are doing your best, you are caring for someone, but then there's accusations are coming. <laughs> and one day, my spouse was praying about it because he was feeling frustrated. What is all there? And the Lord said, do you know what? Said to him, do you know what? The only way, the remedy, the solution to this problem, he said to my husband, is for you to die to your flesh. And so when he came back, he told me, he said, after he got the word, he said, the burden lifted. Because initially he was burdened. Why is this person doing this? Why are you talking like this? Why are you doing this? You know, he just felt, why wouldn't you just align? No, you can't force anybody to do anything. And the Holy Spirit told him, he said, the way you are feeling right now, eh? The only way out is for you to die to your flesh, die to yourself. And he said, after that word, he just suddenly got healed. He, he, he became okay. So the person hasn't changed. But he, the one who went to complain in prayer, had been changed. See the way the Lord works. And when he said with me, I was just smiling because I said, wow, the word of God doesn't change. The same thing he says, the same thing he's saying, he won't change it. If you won't take it today, you may have to take it tomorrow. If tomorrow too doesn't, you, you don't want to take it tomorrow, maybe five years, 10 years, whenever, when you are ready, you must take it, but it won't change. So by the time you are taking it, maybe you look back and say, perhaps I should have accepted this a long time ago. Perhaps, you see. So I'm here to encourage all of us. It doesn't matter who did what. It doesn't matter who stood on the wrong end of the stick. It doesn't matter whose story sounds sympathetic and whose story sounds, you know, horrendous. All are to be loved by God and love heals all. Because you see, when God is in the middle of a matter, the matter will be sorted. Mm. Even in the middle of two thieves, God is there. Sometimes in the middle of chaos, you have to know that God is there. And God has called us to walk in love. And love is the key. Sometimes you are being so irritated by somebody, a little child. You know, someone, maybe they put their toys all over. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just go and say, oh, I've tidied this place. You guys put the Lego here and there. And this maybe this child is on sleepover. Yeah, put the Lego everywhere. And then I realized, ah, are you getting irritated? That line, just love. Very quickly, you get a prompt. And then you calm down. After all, we thank God that they are there to even put Lego around your house. We thank God. In all things, give thanks. Sometimes sit back and say, I remember one time my one, a friend of mine, she was complaining. She was saying that she wasn't happy. She didn't feel that. She didn't feel this. She thought her husband came home too late from work and all that. So she was complaining in her heart, in her spirit. And more, you know, so more or less, you are complaining at the altar. You are complaining to God. So then one day the Lord said, would you, would you like him to lose his job? Okay, I can make him lose his job. You just come home and sit at home. No job, no salary, nothing. Just be with you the whole time. And she was like, hey, no. She said, God, who, is, who said anything about loss of job? And he said, but that's what you are saying. You don't want him to go anywhere. You want him to just sit with you. He can come and sit there. It's just that he goes out because he's going to work. But he can lose it. They can sack him. And he can come and sit with you. And then she said, I repent. Sometimes just take a pause and look at what you are complaining about. Maybe you are complaining. I don't know. He's, he's alive. He's alive. He's here. I don't want him here. Well, well, the Lord can call him elsewhere. Is that what you want? Maybe not. So why don't you thank God for what you have now? Do you see it? Sometimes we don't recognize what that, that rejection in our heart is doing. But Ephesians 3.20 has told you that there is, there is a power that works within us. May it be the power of love. Because if it's another power, still, it will bring it into manifestation, the thing you are feeling. I want to encourage all of us that we come to this awareness that our Father wants us to look like Jesus in every sense of the word. Now, you and I have not been excellent in all of our ways. We've messed up in many ways. But the last time I checked, Jesus doesn't place phone calls and tell people in their dreams of the filthiness of our past lives. He doesn't go announcing to people 
how badly we've messed up. If we say it, we are sharing it in our testimonies. But he doesn't shame us to the world. He doesn't put us on the billboards and embarrass us to the world. Let's not do it to any of his sons and daughters. His father, he deserves reverence. He says, a new command I give to you. Love one another. Take a pause right now and say, Holy Spirit, search my heart. If there's any part of me that is not operating in love, please forgive me. If there's any part of me that has, has become a judgmental and a critical spirit where I judge my leaders or my, those in authority or presidents or I, I speak anyhow, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for my foolishness and help me to walk in love. Father, forgive me for things that I've judged, sinful things I've judged without realizing that I myself walked through it, walked the same sinful path when I was younger. Forgive me. Forgive me. Please help me to love. I really want to be like Jesus. Help me. Show me how. Holy Spirit, come and flood my heart with light. Expose me to myself. For I seem to be walking in blindness. Everybody can see, but I can't see. Help me. Everybody, everybody can see that which I should be grateful for. But, uh, but I, I, I don't seem to see. Help me. Show me. Help me to walk in love. Help me to walk in gratitude. Help me to walk in joy. Help me to walk in peace. Help me to realize that I am not the judge. Help me to realize that love heals. Help me to realize the power of love. Help me to understand that in this life, when I walk in love, it is the proof that I have been translated from darkness into light. Help me to love. Even in situations where it looks like unlovable. It looks like difficult to love. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit, help me to be able to love anyway in the name of Jesus. That house help that came home and, and attempted to abuse the children, help me to love her to Christ, to pray for her, to be there for her and to bring her back to you. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. The spouse I married, whom I loved so dearly those days, help me to love properly. The Christ like love, to love properly. The child you gave me, Father, help me to raise them up in the fear of the Lord. To love them genuinely. Father, search me. If there's any part of my parenting that I think I'm doing out of love, but I don't realize that I'm not loving them at all, giving them tablets, providing them access to the internet, unlimited access, holding these gadgets late at night, watching all sorts of things whilst I, I sleep or whilst I, I, I chit chat with girls, girls, or whilst I busy myself with other things, not realizing that I'm exposing them to all sorts of strange things. Forgive me. It's not the way of love. I thought I was loving. Please have mercy on me. Help me. Help us, Lord. Help us. That little boy that came knocking on a car window and just asked for water. Whom I just took my eye out. Go, 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 go. Father, forgive me. Help me. Help me. Help us, Lord. Help us to love. Help us to open our hearts and our homes. Help us. And Father, let that love begin right from our hearts. Loving you, God, and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. If I love myself, why will I persist in sorrow? If I love myself, why will I persist in irritation, frustration, 
anger and complaints when I know that the word of God tells me that as I have complained and I've said it, that will be my portion. Why do I persist in this? Why do I persist in blindness? Why? Forgive me. Help me. You said, if I love you, I will obey you. Father, I want to obey you. But first, help me to love. For it is in love that I willingly obey you. Anything other than that is not the way. Father, we praise you and we thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the truth that you always pour out. It washes us. It pierces us. It divides soul and spirit. It judges the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. It shines forth light into darkness. Thank you. Father, as the word has come forth, I pray that all distractions, all diseases, that any kind of attacks from the dark kingdom will completely be dealt with, that in your light we will see light, that we will walk in your love, the mighty, empowering love of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, Sister Jewel. Amen and amen and amen. What a word. I don't know about you. I have been cut to the heart. And um, I as well. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sisters. They have heard the word. And if you say you know God and you do not walk in love, and we're liars. So, please, any questions, any clarity, any anything the Lord is putting on your hearts that you want to share with us, you can you can kindly unmute. You can send us um, messages in the chat box. You can even write it there also for everybody to see. But by any which way. Do share what is on your hearts. Okay. Sister Viv. Hello. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. Um, sorry about the background noise. Good evening and thank you, Pastor Adline. Thank you, Mr. Jewel and everyone. Um, so Pastor Adeline, Adeline, when you were talking, I was just noting some things down. And I think um I just have a few questions. I don't think we can get through them now. But I just wrote them down just so that I can at least try and cover a few. Um, so I think um we're talking about um, I think at one point you mentioned having um peace and you know joy. And you might not be happy, but of course happiness is temporary. Um, but you can then have your joy and your peace, and that's what you need, especially in God. I, I'm paraphrasing, so forgive me if I've missed a few of the words out. But um, my question was, can we like realistically point out the fact that people can actually temporarily take out, like take away your peace? Like the peace that, yes, we have peace in God, so it's there. Like it doesn't change, it doesn't shake. But you might have people in your life who genuinely would actually cause certain harm, right? That would take away your peace. And I think I also want to add, uh, maybe tie in another question and then probably take off like two so I think you were talking about, I think when, like, say, if your husband's not talking to you and then you're also not talking to him, like, is that love? Um, What about, so we're all human, right? And as human as we are, certain treatment is expected for one another. So if do unto others as you wish to be done to you, if yes. they think it's okay and they feel like they can treat you like that. What if that's how they actually want to be treated? Mm. What if just basically mirroring them? Yes, not in anger, because you could get to a point where you realize that you are just fight, more or less, let me use the word, fighting a losing battle. 
you're engaging as a person, they're not, you know, it's like you're a nuisance, right? Nobody wants yeah. to feel like that. Yes. So what if you doing that is a way of just basically saving yourself a lot of mental trauma? Because I think, yes. and I think that's one thing, sorry, I, I probably added three now, but I think, could we be like realistic as well about like the the realities of mental health struggles like when it comes to like being ignored or neglected because yes. if, you know the bible talks about you know two become one and where there's um where two agree you know they can bind anything on earth and it'll you know the, it'll be um it'll be bound in heaven and um you know ecclesiastes like you know the typical marriage scripture ecclesiastes for it will talk about um like four nine going it will talk about you know, two are better than one, and you know, you know, um, you know, how is a person who will fall and doesn't have anyone to pick them up? You know, you you kind of read the word of God and you read all these things, and then you get to the point where you realize, you know what, you're actually lonely, even though you're supposed to be one with another person. How then do our women and because we're talking to women, so how then are women expected to fathom? you know, processing loneliness. And I know we will say Jesus is our, our husband, God is our husband, but mm -hmm. God didn't create us an island. He created us. Yeah. Like a woman has to carry a child, you know? Yes, it comes yes. to a process. So we're never meant to be alone. And um, what if you have like, okay, so you have, let me give an example with me. Sorry, it's coming. I think it's adding different, the, the different questions, but it's probably coming yeah. in as one. But so someone like me, I'm a very happy person naturally. I love God. I've seen what God has done in my life and I always see a testimony in no matter how bad things are, I see good. Like that's how I've been. And I think I've noticed that it allow it can actually cause me to mask a lot of things. So you know how yeah. you said you wouldn't ask someone, how are you? Me, you ask, you know, I'd be like, grace abounds. Even yes. if, you know, things are hard, Grace is still abounding. So that's the answer you get from me. You wouldn't even, even though it will get to a point that there's people I need to actually talk to to actually yeah. say I'm offloading some things because it's heavy, I wouldn't. And I will trod on and I'll get on and I'll just find the best and everything. So with that, I'm masking. Over time, yeah. it can take a toll on my mental well-being. So yeah. someone like this, how do you then, you know, how how do we process just processing being ignored or being alone and yes. also showing love constant because you know you're giving love right yes. that's it i'm i think i'm gonna stop here i have one yes. final question like two, later 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 but yeah i'll stop here because mm -hmm. i've added too many but thank you no no it's fine thank you so much sweet sis it's really fine because I'm feeling your question because, I mean, I've walked that path too. I mean, you can tell that I'm also as chatty as you are. And, you know, in the marriage, we a bit, everybody gets married to, you know, we, we have different, usually it's a male that must marry a female. So we are different. Mm -hmm. One may talk more, one may talk less, different kinds of backgrounds, different kinds of um, natures, et cetera. So we are very different. And so, yes, I also experienced the whole loneliness thing and all that. And the Lord turned it on very beautifully. So I do appreciate your question. The whole question of mental illness, I will be able to probably have a session on that because I live, you know, I've experienced a real life situation like that. And so I totally understand, not that I've walked it, but I live with um, that kind of situation. And so I... I, we, we are able to teach you that which the Lord has taught us as we have practically worked it, okay? If you live with somebody who is experiencing a mental health challenge, usually they talk excessively, but they talk excessively about themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. It didn't take me long. I started to see what the Bible talks about nagging um, of a wife, because there was a time when I used to talk excessively about how I feel, how lonely I am, da, 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 da. At that time, I didn't think much of it, but I saw later, I found out that, you know, my husband was just struggling with that whole thing. But when I lived in that atmosphere where, you know, this person was challenged, you know, health-wise with a mind, I started to see similarities. They see things, they talk, they behave a certain way, et cetera. Now, 
somebody may say, oh, then Pastor Anna, it should take away your peace. No, 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 sweetie. <laughs> have, you got, have, have, you, have you listened to the lyrics of the song that says, I still have joy in chaos. I have peace that makes no sense. <laughs> Some time ago, it's not possible for me to go to bed with all the rooms. My children's rooms are not locked, open. And for me to think that, I mean, what if this person, you know, has a bad night and goes around the rooms and misbehaves with the children? Some time ago, fear would not let me sleep. Then I, then I probably have to stay up and keep my ear out. I probably have to set on monitors. You know, those times I used to have baby monitors and things. But now I do. When I sleep, I sleep. You see, I have a piece that doesn't make sense. Because I'm, I'm actually going to a certain situation. And I'm tackling it only with the love of God. Now, because my father knows, the Bible says that because she has set her love on me, I will deliver her. It's Psalm 91. When you, <laughs> when you set your love on the king of kings, he's able to part your Red Sea. You can take it as a practical thing. You can take it as theory or biblical story. But it's up to us. And that, for me, is my actual work, current. So I realized that, hey, God is doing something in my life because some, so if I go back years, some years back, I, 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 I wasn't this person. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. But now I can. I'm able to open my doors. I'm able to take care, host people, etc., irrespective of their state. And I concluded that love is the key. So I decided I would handle this issue with love. The issue comes with a great deal of inconvenience if you should look at it from natural lenses. But when you look at it from God's lenses, it is my sincere prayer that maybe like Esther, me too, at such a time as this, I've been planted here for a season and maybe through this, this journey here in this house, heaven will open and deliverance will come here. Do you understand? So everybody and how you are able to reason out the matter. Somebody will say, let me pack my bags and run away. Danger. It's up to them. But if you have God and you still have to run away, then you don't have God. Do you see? So those are the dynamics. Now let's touch loneliness. So I, I don't know whether you know that not too long ago, the Lord called me away for, for days. It's been quite a long call. So from Zoom, et cetera, it was about 40 days. So from, from my zoom engagement in fact no for my zoom engagement i'll say it was like 80 days so that can be pretty lonely right but this time i was on a call i was called out it's not, it's not like i wanted to go i was called out he told me i'm taking you from the phone to the throne so i went then he told me he was calling me 40 days away from functions speaking engagements work at the office people counseling everything just go another 40 days so i did that too you can call it lonely, but it was a call. Now, sometime ago in the marriage, <laughs> I would experience what you call lonely. I feel, I'm married, but I feel alone and all those kind of things. But now, it was actually a divine call. The Lord was calling me. So I heeded. Sweetheart, if I should tell you the kind of things that he has taught me in this period, you'll be amazed. There comes a time that he needs to catch your attention. And whatever way, shape, or form he will use to catch your attention, he will use it. Now, those times in the marriage where I felt lonely, I got to find out and I got to know what we call the person of Jesus Christ. Such that now I'm at a place where I often say it was better that I was afflicted. I joined the psalmist in Psalm 991. Because before affliction, I went my own way. I did my own wisdom, my own thinking. But now I follow God's commands, or only his commands. I'm, I'm not interested in anything else. I follow his command. Recently, I learned something. We had a conference at church, and I learned something. I learned that God will test you in adversity, and he will also test you in affluence. Now, I hadn't fully caught it. I knew the testing in adversity because when it happened to me, it brought me closer to Jesus. So I'll never look back and despise it. I thank God for it, which is why when a sister is going through her journey, I know that it is well. It's just it's a transformation. God is just changing her into a beautiful butterfly. She just has to walk the path. She has to walk it. So I understand. 
but I hadn't really considered the test of affluence. When all is well in your home, how, how do you behave? There's very little fasting. There's very, 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 uh, or there is unserious prayer. In fact, there is a lot of sleeping. There's a lot of sleeping, eating, sex, laughter. There is a certain, there, there's a certain atmosphere, but we don't recognize that even in that place, it is a test. So when you are joyful in the marriage, how, how, how do we behave? How do we respond? What's our work with the Lord like? Usually it's casual. It's, it's very, oh. <laughs> it's a certain way. It took me a while to realize that I hadn't recognized my test in affluence. So most of it had failed. Now, when you fail your test in affluence, when I say affluence, it means it could be a time where you have joy, you have laughter, you have peace in the home, you know, you, your children are cool, they're excelling in class, husband is just, you know, all over you, you are just cool. So, so, so it all feels good. But, but, but do you pay attention to the Lord, to the word? Do you walk in wisdom? Are you humble before him? Do you say, Father, flood my heart with light? Show me. No, 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 no. Usually, no, no, not really. Not really. Sometimes there's just a bit of complacency, pride. We feel cool. We think, yeah, this is how it ought to be. We don't recognize it's a test. So when we fail that test, we head right back into affliction again which is a season where we say, oh gosh, what's all this? Why are you treating me like this? Why? I mean, do you think we live in a box? You know, when you, <laughs> when you were saying we weren't created to just, you know, live that way. I was smiling because I used to use those words very harshly. I used to say things like, um, you know, we're not created to live in a box and all that. And I'm an island. <laughs> yes, an island. Yes, yeah. okay. So yours is island. Yeah, me, I used to tell him box. No, 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 you can't live in a box and I'll have an attitude and all that. It's all just tough, tough. So I realized that wow, we've been through cycles of affliction and affluence, affliction and affluence, affliction and affluence, and we were just being tested. We were just being tested in both arenas. And, and some of us did not recognize it. So you fail one, you go and write the other test, you, you fail it, you, you know, that, that was how it was. So for me, without doubt, I know that I know that in affliction, if we repent and turn to God, he will pour out his heart to us, you show us his ways. So you get turned around. But the pouring of his heart and showing you his ways is actually affluence. So it brings you to peace of mind, joy, you know, contentment. But it can be very short-lived if you don't live that arena well, because even in that, you are being tested. And I didn't, it took me a while to catch it. it. Took me a while to catch it. So all of these things, I just want to encourage all of you because these things that we are sharing, they are real and we will actually walk it. Somebody will not walk it to teach it and just leave another in limbo. We shall all walk it. There will be times when you have relatives and friends, but Moses alone will have to encounter God at the burning bush alone. And uh, uh, David will have to encounter God alone somewhere he's looking after his sheep and you know battling lions and things and still he will be going through something where later the Lord will use so there are times when the Lord requires us to walk in that lonely space but you may not know what he's doing so we may despise it but it may be your burning bush experience it may be your time for fire it may be your time for growth. It may be your time for, for, for maturity. It may be your time for an encounter, but you don't realize because you've been distracted by a desperate need or an itchy ear for talk to me, be with me, pay attention to me. Do you see? So I just want to encourage you, no matter what you are going through, the Bible says all things work together for good. For those who love God, we're just talking about loving God. So in loving God, whether it's a good time or it's not a good time, it is, it is part of the work. Do you see? So I've come to a place where instead of my solution being, let this person go, stop this, don't let this one cut me, I'm tired, they cut this one off. That's not it. We have to walk it. I'm here to encourage all of us. Now, let's talk about the thing about how sometimes, you know, so somebody may be a bubbly person, another may not be. We are of different makeups. So I'll, I'll take two of my sons. 
So one of them at a point got upset with the other one because this other one is bubbly, likes to talk, likes to share his stuff right from the time he was a baby. Even when we didn't know the words he was speaking, if he feels you are not listening, he will move it into tunes. He starts to sing it. So it was all about utterance. Then the bigger brother, he's more quieter, you know, likes his space. So at a point he said he doesn't feel loved by the brother. You know, he feels the brother doesn't want to listen to him. You don't want to listen. So very similar to what you're saying. Like, so then he's beginning to feel lonely. He feels put away, you know, and all that. So I called him. What a precious moment it was sharing with him the testimony of the work of his parents, similar to the thing he and his brother were experiencing. I said, what are you experiencing? Sounds so much like daddy and I. I said, you know how your dad is a wonderful person, right? He said, yes. I said, but do you know how I used to feel? I used to feel lonely, da, 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 because I thought dad didn't want me, didn't want to listen. Didn't want... He's just different, just like your big brother. And I wanted to talk more, just like you want to talk more. So let me teach you what God taught me. Then I taught him. And then I said to him, I said, you know what? You will go to uni and you will have a roommate who is not like you. You will later on in life get married to somebody who is not like you. But you have to know how to love her, irrespective of whether she wants to listen or she doesn't want to listen, because we are all uniquely different. So I used that opportunity to teach them. And the wonderful thing was that it was a real practical tuition because the example was their mom and dad. And it was interesting to me that the thing that used to frustrate me once had become the testimony for my boys. And it was so helpful because they caught it. We are very different. Some are very bubbly. Some are stressed with our bubbles, extremely stressed. They are even stressed with too much utterance. They, they don't like it. Even if you type and you type too much, they can't read up. If you are talking too much, they, they can't take it. Maybe because you and I were not created like that, that would sound strange. But it got to a time when I tried to know the people I was called to help rather than always know myself. I tried to know them and I found these things out. I also find, found out that we, we birth them. The, the differences, you will give birth to this, the differences. So, you, so later you must get to know the children you have given birth to. You will be in, you, you will be, it will be interesting for you to find out some of them are not like you. Some of them are like your spouse. Some of them have the same attitude that used to make you feel lonely. They have it, but you bet them, you have multiplied their nature. And so now you realize that it's not a bad thing after all. It's just, you just have to know how to relate with them. So I had to learn. I had to learn. Some people don't like us to always be in their face, always asking questions. Always, they don't like it. Now, about the mental health, if it becomes a belief system that if I don't share, if I don't talk, if I don't do this, I will become mentally crazy, so shall it be, God forbid. So, so we need to quickly pull away from that because that's an ability that the enemy can use the individual to hurt their own selves. It's a belief system. As a man thinks, so is he. So a lot of people kind of, you know, make big the mental thing by saying, you know, if, if I'm so miserable, if I'm alone, then I can become mentally something. If that's the person's belief system, that may be so. But for me, in the loneliness, it's a very good opportunity for meditation. I use it for meditation. I can spend that time in quiet time. I can spend that time very, very intriguing moments because you can have very lengthy discussions with the king for hours. It's okay. It's allowed. Now, until, until you get to a certain um, awareness or a certain place, you think it doesn't exist. So, so there were times when, for me, that was, it didn't exist. I, I couldn't, I mean, how, how can I just be there alone for hours doing what? But I've worked it, so I know it exists. You see, but some time ago, I didn't know. So everything I wanted lay in this spouse of mine. It was a very high level idolatry. An atmosphere we shall not encourage. An atmosphere you must not desire because it won't go well. Whether it's with a spouse, a child, anything, it, it won't go well. So we have to learn how to do well with people and how to do well alone. And at whichever point in time or whatever we have, it is very okay. It's fine, no problem, no biggie. And you see, it's important. 
if we are if we don't do that then we become you know very desperate very needy and able to fall to whatever the enemy throws at us okay the the question was plenty and <laughs> and spread out but I, I get the drift of it because you know i i have walked that path with respect to the whole mental thing i would encourage us that we really have to philippians 2 5 should be a scripture we hold on to i have the mind of christ the mind of christ so that we don't get i mean people tell me about relationships with women and the women end up in a psychiatry well god forbid god forbid it's when we idolize things that you know when the thing gets taken away we, we struggle god forbid everybody's mind will be sane everybody's mm -hmm. mind will be seen in the name of jesus no mm -hmm. matter the situation this because look a lot of people are experiencing tough times so a lot of people are experiencing tough times today i was talking to one of my sisters very tough times people are experiencing tough times and it, it's <clears throat> well a story for another day i mean people have experienced losing children losing spouses lose, so what so should the world should their world end no, it must continue. How? How can I continue when I've lost my child? When I've lost my son? The Lord say, I am with you. Hey, you are with me, says saying, how can I? I am with you. So the same word is the same thing they are holding on to. Do you see it? It's better we mature now. You see? Okay, let me pause here. Um, Sister Frimpoma says, also in affluence and adversity, he calls us to focus on him, correct? Not to idolize any of those things and not the happenings and things, correct? Idolatry creeps in very slowly if we don't allow him to help us stay focused on him, correct? So you see that this season, the word, that word idolatry is huge. It's something that has really disturbed us. So the Bible says, my little children, Keep your life free from idols. Idols capture our affection, causes us to love them, but they can do nothing for us, you see? But anytime we walk, we go against that first commandment, thou shalt have no other God but him. It's just trouble. Very important, you see? So in each heart, let us, let us elevate Jesus as him. Very important. Then from there, you'll be amazed at how he helps us. He helps us very much. He will cause the marriage to, to you know, he, he will cause us to prosper in every way. He knows how to do it. And it, it is done in his timing. Very important. And in his way. There are sometimes we feel that, Lord, I was expecting you to do it this way. And he did it that way. But you look back and say, ah, my God has done all things well. You see. So I want to encourage us. For me, the biggest thing, the things that destroyed me came from inside me. I, I cannot stop preaching that message. The thing mm -hmm. that destroys a person comes from within that person themselves. Mm -hmm. It comes from inside. I could be irritated if you're on your phone. If you're not minding me, you're not looking at me, I could just be irritated through tangents. Today, if you like, you can be on your phone, no problem. I'm able to handle it. So what is it within me that is gone or has been sorted? It's help. I've been helped. You see, I've been helped. We shall all be helped. Amen. Amen. But sideline, can I come in again, please? Yes, please come in. Unless please. anyone else wants to, but I think... No, no, come I, in. I, and sister I keep adding now. notes. Um, so you, so I think I wrote this even before you just said it, but I think you were talking about how people have gone through a lot and people go through a lot. Right. And I think earlier on, you mentioned how I think not being able to receive help is a sign of pride, like, um, receive like love, receive correction. And, you know, so I think, um, I had, so I used to be a Sunday school teacher years ago and my girls are like my little sisters now. So they're they're in their you know 20s and stuff so I think I had one of them over and um I love to cook I love to have people over you know just uh -huh. make them enjoy food and be happy and we have good conversation so I think she wanted to wash dishes and I was like no just sit down you know and don't stress yourself and she kept insisting I was like no 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 just sit and so she was like um 
you know, they know like I, they can help me with that, you know, because I'm usually on my own in like in the UK. I'm usually with just my girls. So they know it could help me. I was like, I have a dishwasher. I'll just throw it in. So finally, she was like, oh, she's heard something like people who can't receive help. It's a sign of pride. And I was like, oh, OK. So, you know, it's a, I had to reflect on that. And I was like, well, I looked at it and I, was, I, I had to reflect a bit on myself as well, because it's important to self-reflect. And I noticed that my love language, right, has developed yes. as I've grown, as I've matured. And it's it's come in line with how Jesus came to teach us. So leadership by example. So, you know, leadership by servitude. So I think naturally I would always ask this question, what would Jesus do? Like somebody would slap me and I'll be asking, what would Jesus do? And I'm asking God, like, why have you created me like this? Like, you know, and, mm. you know, I would do that. So I think it's developed into me wanting to, to serve and take care of people. Fine, if it's my birthday, you want to get me a present, get me. I'll be shocked. I'll be surprised. It'll be beautiful. If you want to, you know, you actually want to offer me certain support, fair enough. But I think if I'm taking care of you, like, you know, I've had you over, I want to take care of you properly, host you properly, because that's just me. Um, so with that, right, um, basically, how is, how can you, okay, I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to put the question properly. So somebody who... And okay, so like with the girls like this, right? My example of my girls, it's very difficult for me to say, okay, some like I'm struggling to find childcare because I have a work commitment and there's no one. I'll check I'll mm -hmm. check with my mom, but my mom works full time. She's older now, she gets tired more. So at times I believe that it well, it's not her burden, you know. And if it's yeah. gonna be difficult for her, I'm not gonna put that on her. And I know yeah. people have their own stuff going on. So someone like me, I will just not be thinking of just my needs in that moment, I, I stop to think of other people. So how do you then differentiate between that and pride? And I think talking about pride, sorry, let me just put that question in. How do you um exercise tough, like, so where does tough love like come in to like basically holding each other accountable? Because as much as you say something like, um, you know, we 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 refer back to the sin that somebody's currently walking in, but we walked in in the past. We're kind of called to also hold each other accountable in love, you know? And sometimes, unfortunately, it comes with a bit of um, some tough love. I think that's how we describe it. But, like, you know, what's it? I don't know how to say it. Yes. I think that's yes. it. But how yeah. then does tough, where does tough love fit into this? Where it's going, you know, I was speaking to a lady pastor friend of mine, and I think she was talking about grace. So I was, I was asking that question, like, where does grace come in, right? And I know someone who recently did something very terrible, and they're saying, okay, can you extend grace? But yes. I can I can tell this person needs, they need to be told off, you know, oh, and get okay. their, them, their brains restarted. <laughs> if they're not oh, entitled, oh. you wouldn't spank them. But if they were, their parent would have spanked them. Because yes. what they're doing needed some discipline. Let me put it that way. Where does that fall into place? And where do you then say, I need to take a step back, right? Because yes. maybe this situation, it's not helpful. I can still yes. pray for them. I can still, well, that's in my head. Okay, I'm praying for them, but I need to take a step back for my own health, my safety, you know. In what situation, where's, where's the line between taking a step back and then not giving up on them and then not showing them love? And all the above. <laughs> I'm so sorry yes. for my question. It's okay. It's fine. I think Sister Frimpoma or any of the sisters will help me. But then, um, you know, the, the thing, so the key here is motive, right? So, you know, the thing about, sometimes we say a step back to save ourselves or to keep our sanity or whatever. You remember the thing that they said to Jesus, save yourself and save us. That option doesn't exist in Christendom. Nobody can save themselves. So, so that's very important, okay? Like, you know, the, the, the mindset of, I want to save myself does not exist in Christendom. It's God who saves us. Pastor okay, so sorry, can I give a, an example? Maybe that can help because, I'm sorry, can I please? Yes, oh. yeah, we can share, give an okay. example. The recent, not recently, it's actually like three years ago or so, 
So I was living in my mom's house and my brother was there as well. And something just happened. I think I took something of his and he lashed out. And this is the first I've ever taken anything of his, right? And he lashed out. And this is something he does to me. He's done that to me. Like he's my younger brother. So he's done that to me forever. And mm. it got to a point where even with my children present, he he actually like burst into the bathroom, like literally whilst I was getting my girls ready for school, um, went into my room and scattered. When I say scatter, it's not a joke. And I talk about this because it's I'm not talking about it from a pain, a place of pain. It's I'm I'm freed from it, you know. Um, but he literally turned my room upside down and literally started threatening to kill me. And this is a person who through influences, like negative influences has come into contact with like, you know, drugs and stuff like that, you know? So things that are not healthy for him, things that don't keep his, you know, his mindset straight. So it was a very threatening experience, especially me holding my child in my hand and trying to get them to school and nobody there to support. My mom was there, but she wasn't supporting. And um, so I had to, we actually had to call the police to come and intervene. So this is a real life situation that happened to me. It's not somebody's story. Um, so the police came, he left the house. They said they're going to get a warrant for him, blah, blah, blah. I managed to get my girls to school, go to work. Um, very late, you know, everything was just in disarray. And um, eventually he, he was given, like, I think he just stepped out. He left the house and I think he was... Um, it later came out that he would be given, um, if he's found, he would be arrested, yeah? And they told him not to step foot in the house. They should He should come near the house for some time. So when this happened, at that point, I wanted to look for a place, a new place to stay. So one, to get my girls safe, to get myself safe. My sister and her, her husband had to come and like create a lock in our bedroom just to, because you can't tell how this person is volatile. You can't tell what the next step is, right? So this is what we did. And I know you gave the example of like, you know, having peace that makes no sense, like sleeping where you would have been locking the doors and stuff. But this is what mm -hmm. happened. So fast forward, we found a new place, myself and the girls. God was very good. Like, and in all, like, I just kept believing that something will happen, like whatever will happen will be, will happen in God's name. So we found a new place. We moved there and that was it. So that, you know, immediate threat was not there anymore. Yes. Over time, I got to a point where, like, if I go and visit my mom, he say hi, I'll just hi, and I'll just walk away. I'll try to keep my space because I didn't know where his, you know, his headspace was. And um, mm -hmm. I'll reduce going to the house as much. I wouldn't let my kids go there just like that. Um, over time, I actually started praying for him. So I realized mm -hmm. I was praying for him. Like, this was like a year later, especially after the initial pain, you know, of the whole situation, like it was very traumatic and I'm not going to pretend it wasn't. Um, mm. it, when it subsided, I realized I was praying for him, like just God to save him and like his salvation, you know? Um, fast forward recently, he's been very sick, which I like, even God knows in my heart, like I'm so, I'm sad. Like, you know, when you, you feel, you feel yes. the love and the empathy and you're praying that he's well and healed and I'm calling him and I'm, like, should I cook for you? And things like that. Like, I'm praying with him. This morning I called and I prayed with him. And I'm at this point now, but I, I could, I don't think I would have gotten here had it been, I still stayed in the house. Because I know the experiences I went through. This is a person mm -hmm. who would come to you in front of the children and say, oh, look at you pulling, I'm doing my daughter's hair. How are you going to tell me I'm doing their hair like they are dogs? Like, I mean, you know, it was all these provocation where you'd even try mm -hmm. and take your step away. But mm -hmm. it's the person and where they find themselves. And unfortunately, yes. that's blood. Like, you don't, he's my brother. Like, this is it. I didn't get to choose him. And I think this is what made it even more painful. Because at least with a husband, you know, you kind of meet this person, this stranger, you start falling in love. Like, you know, you, you unconsciously choose them, whether on purpose or not. But this was somebody, I didn't get a choice. It was, it was just, it happened. So it was more, it was very painful dealing with that like level of abuse. And it was abusive um, at his hands, verbal, everything else. But taking myself away, I'm able to appreciate just him as a person, who him that God has created and just love on him in the way that God wants me to, in terms of praying for him, checking on him. But um, I caught that environment again. Do you get my point? Mm -hmm. I'll see you. But I will yes. not be in the position where I have to come and live back with you again because mm. 
there has to be some level of seeing that the person has changed. And we need to be realistic. The heart of man, the Bible talks mm -hmm. about the heart of man. It's very dark. Yeah. And there's people that, yeah. you know, so this is an example that, like, this is why mm -hmm. I asked that question. I think in terms of even dealing with, and I think this is where even the mental health question came in and stuff, like dealing with all these things, right? And processing it. And mm -hmm. half the time, not even talking about it because of shame, right? Yeah. You, you feel like you're even you've done something wrong it, it's not you like whatever it is and yeah. if there's women going through like abuse they feel like and you see like even what i said like my brother i didn't choose him with this they even feel like they went to choose him like okay it'd be a weaker kind when to and that shame keeps people like very mute yes um yes. sorry yeah so that's that's the example just to give context i guess to my question so thank you thank you so much thank you i mean i I thank God for your life and also for your family. I know that, you know, our father is merciful and I'm trusting for, you know, a total, total recovery for your brother, you know, for his mind, his heart, his health, every part of him. And I'm also praying that the trauma that, you know, you guys have experienced and he himself has gone through and mom has gone through. I'm just trusting God and even um, his nieces, your little girls, you know, seeing uncle that way. All of these things um, are <clears throat> really tough and challenging. And I do understand because, you know, it kind of fits in well with what I was also sharing that we go through these things. And sometimes the, the point is if the person is our brother or, you know, family member, spouse, whatever, wh where do we go? Sometimes there's nowhere to go. Sometimes the person is a son and maybe we are mom and we have to take care of them. The person is a brother and they're staying with us. We have to take care of them. And so we, we, are, we have to really, I think on Sunday parenting school, the guest who is going to speak to us is going to speak concerning the area of um, those who've gotten involved in drugs and things like that and how they behave and maybe how caregivers and loved ones can um, you know, live with them well, because the truth is, you see, in this particular case, in your case, you know, because you are, you are married, you have children, etc. that ability to move to a new location existed. But for some, it doesn't exist. Their family, they are in one house. There was one guy who used to chase his parents, jump over the sofas and stuff and, you know, run after his parents after he would go and smoke weed and do all those things and go off you know and I I mean I, I used to be scared of him when I was younger like who's this guy but I noticed that his mom and dad lived with him throughout and I realized that wow there comes a time when when it comes to bloodline relations <clears throat> there's a way that they handle these matters so definitely prayer is important Def definitely you know and um, continuing to trust God is important. Sometimes the situation can get out of hand, get to a place of threats, violence, things like that, and it's not a good place. We, we, we all don't like that kind of situation and we still have to keep trusting God for, the, for, for, for victory. In some cases, police, the police may get involved or come and take him to the mental facility. Sometimes they give them injections and things. But I'm trusting God through all of these things for ultimate, um, you know, for solutions that the Lord himself will give us, for wisdom, uh -huh, wisdom. Sometimes that's how I do it, wisdom. I thank God that your, you and your brother have come to a place where you've been able to be there for him, pray for him, etc. cetera. That, that's really good. I thank God for your life. You're a good woman. It's very important because at the end of the day, when they should cast their minds back, they should be able to point out you know my sister was there for me she prayed for me they have to be able to remember you know they will see jesus in us and remember very very important but i'm going to allow sisters sister friend from are you there i'm going to allow sisters to step up and share and um, i think sister sister rosie do you want to speak oh. no okay, sorry sister. sorry sorry it's okay. uh yes please. accident it's okay. yeah yes please that's okay Sister Frimpoma, would you share with us? Okay. Or any 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 sister? Okay, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I Thank was started. I'm sure some other sisters would also share. Yes, um, please. Yeah, God bless you and Sister Viv. Thank you for, for the questions because when these questions come, we are all help. Yes. And on on the 
um, I get how you gave the particular example that you did. And um, like Pastor Alain shared, there are times where there are certain cases that the people don't have the option to move out. So that becomes a different approach. The point I'm making is that when the details are the way you've shared, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. This yeah. journey that we are walking with the Lord, we each have our own journey. On this platform, there's a lot of general um, things that are shared. There's a lot of things that generally help all of us. But as we get into details of each one's situation, maybe with one, we have to turn left before we turn right, but it's all the word of God. Maybe with one, we have to go straight before we turn right, but it's same, the same biblical principles and the word of God. So that doesn't change. Who God is doesn't change, but it's how he handles our different situations. And so I see the point you're making, but I still raise my hand and put my, heart on, my hand on my heart and say that the biblical principles work. They do work. Mm. They just, mm. are trying, they, they navigate differently in different situations, but they do work. And and um, I was having a discussion with a sister the other day and we we're talking about mental health and therapy. I know mental health um, is treated with medication or therapy. So when it's medication, that is it is a clinical problem. But when it's therapy, and I was sharing with the sister, what other better therapy than Jesus? Therapy is treating illnesses without um, surgeries and medication. And, and Jesus is therapy. He's the best therapy ever. We just need to understand how that therapy works. And so to answer your question, the Jesus therapy works and works and works. However, I agree with you that situations call for different approaches, but God doesn't change. His principles always work. So that's the little I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. His principles always work. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really grateful. Sisters, any more? Some some of these things, some of them, you know, maybe we've walked it. Sometimes we are still walking it, you know. Um, sometimes, sometimes there's a specific testimony that you have that can really speak to us concerning this matter. You know, Sister Viv's case, in her case, was a brother. In some in some cases, it's a spouse. It's a spouse. You know, in some cases, it's a son or sometimes it's somebody living with you. So many different cases, but in all of this, I'm really trusting God for the grace for us to be able to, you know, be victorious in all these matters. But as for the love, it is critical. You know, in, in, in our case, one of the things I saw was, you know, there's, there was a lot of conversation, desire to speak over and over and over on a particular topic. And sometimes it's like, Nobody wants to listen. And just like Sister Viv said, I remembered those times as a wife when I want to speak and nobody wants to listen. I used to feel down. I used to feel sad because that was how I used to interpret it. I used to interpret it as rejection, no love, you know. So I remembered. And so because of that, what I do is I give a listening ear. And <laughs> sometimes it can be a dawn in the middle of your quiet time or whatever, and maybe the person will come and says, I want to talk to you and tell you things. And I'm like, wow, at this time, and I feel the Holy Spirit said, that's okay, just allow. And I'll just keep quiet and listen. And sometimes by the time we get to the end, I say, thank you. And then the person will say, thank you for listening. Then I realize, wow, the person has felt loved. And, and then I see that he's gone calm. Do you see? So they are just wisdom. Sometimes I'll just ask God, Father, show me, talk to me, you know, because I realize that it's never the solution when I want to do me, when I feel, oh, enough is enough. Look, Charlie, I'm tired. Let me go. No, no, no. It's never. So I realize if anybody should be inconvenienced, it should be me. It should be me. So then I'll say, Lord, help me. And sometimes you say, you tell me, just listen. And then there have been other times when the Lord has helped me to give a word in season. Sisters, it has worked though. The Lord has helped me to give a word. He said, Alain, the word heals. Speak for the word. So I'll just share. And sometimes in sharing, you know how I share? I share it as a testimony. And that too works. Testimonies too work. So there are different things. And like Sister Frimpo my saying, you, you know, different situations that to somebody mad, and saliva was put on his eye. 
to another, you know, go, your faith has made you well. To another, speak the word only, my servant to be healed. You know, to this one, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So however the Lord would do it, but I always like to have that, Father, show me, teach me. There are times when before I rise up in the morning, I get a message concerning, uh -huh, let me share this. this, this might help you. So but in the time of a lot of speaking, like threatening, speaking, threatening, I'll do this, I'll do this. Then by the time I woke up, the Lord had brought out of my belly and talked. He brought a flow out for that particular situation before it happened. So when it happened, this is what I did. I said, bro, that's not who you are. I said, that's not who you are. Let me tell you who you are. And I started to just speak it, speak life, speak life. Sisters, by the time I was done, there was agreement. There was a calmness. Then he said, yes, yes, yes. That's not who I am. Yes. And there was a calmness. And so all the agitation, all the threatening, the thing that the dark kingdom was trying to do, I was reminded that he who is in us is greater and his methods are greater. And by the time I started to speak life and decree and bring out who he was, he caught it and calmed down. And that, that, that thing, that spell or whatever was broken off, you know, for that, but that session or that moment that day. So I, I've been doing that every now and then. I ask God, show us. Give it. Sometimes the Lord will say, you sit at table and eat. You do this. You know, sometimes he say, just be quiet. Just, that, that's, that's it. So it's like a step-by-step -step being led by the spirit. Let us be encouraged. And God in his wisdom knows how to do these things and he, he gives us the key and your victory at the end of the day is the testimony to heal many very important there, there's no victory if you know the storyline is then that's all and i was scared and i fled and finished no it's step by step if the lord says take take baby jesus and flee to egypt you must take jesus go to egypt get up go back here you go there. Whatever the Lord tells us, let's do it. Amen. Okay. Yeah, any more hands up? Sister Jewel, let me pass on to you. Okay. Thank you so much for start line. There's no more questions. Sister Viv, we have really, really been a blessing. God bless you for sharing. Thank you so much, Sister Frank Palmer, as well. And um, you, 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 you summarized the whole thing so beautifully in the end the scriptures are true god's way is the highest way is the best way so thank you for that i mean sometimes it looks like yeah that that way is mental health we will come up with all of those things but if we would walk alone and, and there was this word i heard from pastor line and at that time i was actually going through so much but it just hit me she said when your obedience is complete, every disobedience will be punished. And so no matter how, and me, the, this love work journey, honestly, the Lord dealt with me last year. And the more I hear, the more I realize that, oh, I thought the work was done, but there's still more, you know. Yes. <laughs> there's still so much more. So it's it's been a blessing. And like I say, every time I come here, it's like, there's just, chipping he's just chipping away bit by bit and and i believe that it's everybody else too you know so let's let's just go the jesus way initially it's hard but you realize that the more you do it the more it becomes easier and then people now come to you and they're telling you your own story and you're supposed to help them so god bless you so much for that life um, it's in god bless you too yeah we thank we thank god for this time dear sisters you can reach out as much as possible and we will be helped um Pastor Alain, do you want to pray with us that um, yes, you yes. know there are still some time yes. there God there's still more no, because yeah. i realized that we didn't even finish with sister jewel she talked about drawing a line like when is pride when is this yes you don't yes. know that if but, I, she sent me a message as i was talking <laughs> yeah so i think maybe you should just put it all together next week next yes. week let's look at the story of mary and martha maybe that will be helpful 
Yes, okay, yes. you remember yes. Martha was really, really working. Mary was yes. doing next to nothing. Let's look yes. at that scenario. Maybe that will help us. Just remind me on the marriage school page. All okay. right, so, and then and then let's try and, um, the, any of the questions that Sister Viv brought up, the scenarios that we didn't fully tackle, we can bring it back because she brought out a lot of meaty uh, things that is helpful for all of us. Okay. All right, so since our time is fast spent, we just want to wrap up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We are grateful. We thank you so much. We, You've given us the opportunity to sit at your feet. And even in, in sharing, so many things have come up. I believe that you stirred our hearts. I believe that you spoke into all of us. There are very different scenarios. Everybody's situation is so different. But Father, you remain the same in all of this. We may have varying stories, varying examples, but, but our God is unchanging. You remain the same. The same God, the same God who is able to deliver us, the same God who is able to help us, the same God who is faithful yesterday, today, forever. He is the same. You are the one that we are looking up to in every sister's situation father i'm asking that you give us clarity father that we, we we are sensitive to your word that we hear you for ourselves to some you are saying my daughter take up your cross and follow me just take up your cross and follow me father the cross is heavy but we trust you we know that you are with us you are helping us for for them that are going through situations where family members or siblings are in a certain difficult place or spouses, you know, in a mentally challenged place, a, a, a hard of hearing place, a place where it's just difficult to communicate, difficult to understand. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking by the power of the Holy Spirit, let your peace prevail. Let there be calmness in the midst of the storm. I pray, oh God, that you will speak forth your healing in the name of Jesus, you will intervene in the matter that, Father, you will step into the situation and turn things around in the name of Jesus. For them that have, have struggled for years and years, the matter is not changing, nothing is changing, and it has become like this is just the way it is. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be a turn around in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, we are saying that we are yielding to you. Have your way inside of us and move. Move. We want the power of love to operate in our hearts, in our minds, to operate down on the inside of us forgive us for the other ways we walked ways of irritation judgmental spirit critical spirit bad attitude forgive us and by the power of love i pray that father you will cause all of us to testify that wow indeed god is love that indeed love heals that indeed love helps that indeed love teaches love prays Love counsels, love cares, love is empathetic. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We desire you more and more. Tonight, as we are wrapping up, I pray that each and every one of us will receive a fresh baptism of your love. In the mighty name of Jesus, a fresh baptism of your love. In the mighty name of Jesus, baptize us afresh in agape love. I give you praise and I give you glory and I thank you for answered prayer. Amen and amen. Amen, sisters. Amen. 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 God bless you so much for sunlight. We are baptized in love afresh in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, sisters, can you please unmute and let's share the grace. Send them. Um, I know that you understand that God had to do his own thing. So please bear with us. Yes, sisters, if you're unmuted, let's just share the grace and fellowship. And now may the God grace of our Lord God Jesus God. Christ, love of, God. love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely God's goodness and love shall us. All the days of our lives, and we are dwelling in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much. Yeah. Please, you can stay and join us for the Holy Ghost session. Sister Nancy, is that the one taking us? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. So God bless Thank you. you. God bless you and the team for the good work you are doing. Please stop. Mm -hmm.